What's happening, family? It's Cast Sports again. Back for another afternoon with my people. Now, as usual, before I get started, let me give a shout out to the JBT community. We're a group of people that just love to talk boxing. And we're always looking for others to join us. You don't have to have a podcast. The only requirement is you just have to love to talk boxing. That's all. That's all. Welcome to another episode of Cast Sports, The Box Doria. This is the Monday afternoon edition. Yep. Starting another week up. How's everybody doing this Monday afternoon? Of course, I got another big week planned for you. But first of all, did everyone have a good weekend? I did, but it's over. Had a card from the UK this weekend going to touch on it like I usually do about 2.30 before we start the show. And uh, I know we got a big card Friday. I don't know what's happening Saturday. But I got a big week planned. Let's preview it. Today, Monday, it's going to be the venue show that I've been talking about. Yes, Saturday is the big tip zoo. The best in front door. Big week of boxing. Pro box week, Wednesday. We got the card Friday. The big top rank card full of some of their young fighters. Friday. Headlined by Oscar Valdez and uh, uh, also a uh, female undisputed fight on there. Denise Estrada versus your cast of ballet. And then Saturday is the big one. Tim Zoo, Fondora, Roly, Pitbull. Mm. But this is what I got for you this week. Tim Layton in the building. Remo. Tim Layton, hashtag JBT. Remo, hashtag Let's Talk Fashion. Hashtag JBT. Salute, gentlemen. Good to see you. On the Monday afternoon edition of Cast Sports, the Box Story. How was everybody's weekend? Well, I don't know why I'm asking y'all that. I've been talking to y'all all weekend. <laughs> it ain't like I haven't seen y'all since Friday. <laughs> yeah. That's the nice thing about this social media. But this is what I got for you this week. Another big week. Today is going to be the venues. I'm going to touch you on uh, 10 venues. They bring us boxing little history of them and uh, a couple of fights that happened at those venues in the past. And tomorrow, uh, I'm going to come, I had the, uh, some of the top switch hitters that's ever competed in boxing. And I might come try to combine that with the, some of the top power punchers. I think I'm going to combine those two shows in one day. Mm-hmm. So look for the top switch hitters. Some of the top switch hitters of all time. You know, I don't do all best top 10 lists or none of that. There's some of the top switch hitters of all time. And some of the top power punches of all time. That's tomorrow. And then Wednesday, I'm going to start my decade show. I'm going to start with the uh, 1900s and come all the way up through the 90s. A different decade each day. A little history of the decade. Uh, some of the uh, significant events in boxing that occurred during those decades and some of the top fighters 
that competed during those decades and some of the top fights should be fun and then the profile of course is friday going to be uh the eastern assassin himself larry home so that's who we're going to be talking about friday but, oh oh you can't wait to get out of there Tim. how much longer you got hmm this too I hope you get off at 2.30, <laughs> like Lonnie Lee. That Remo. Hashtag let's talk fashion in here. So Remo over at uh, KQKC. I thought I'd go in there. Let him see that JBT as much as possible. We had a great meeting, sir. Discussed a few things. It was good for the first meeting, you know. Yeah. To get us off the ground. Very, very good meeting. Got a few positions filled. I think I got something to do with the recruiting. <laughs> yeah. Me and Jay Hardcore, of course. We I still can't get that commercial to work on here, so. If you uh you touched on trying to set it in some kind of other format or something, if that would help. Uh I would appreciate it. Yeah, we got a big boxing week. Of course it's the Pro Box Week, and then we got Friday night card and Saturday. And Saturday, remember, is the big one. Tim Zhu, Sebastian Fondora. And Tim Zhu's manager already said if they win. We're going to start the Bud negotiations right away. As you know, Bud uh, activated his mandatory. So he gets the winner. Yeah, BD's the one of them. I think. I was listening to KQKC. He made a good point, too. And I, I, I don't think Earl is leaving. Uh, why would he leave Derek Prince? I mean, Derek Jane. What is he, 29 and 1, 28 and 1? I mean, he just lost his first fight with the I mean, he's not that crazy about that O, is he? Well, you went 20, almost 30 fights with the man training. You didn't lose one, you're going to leave him? No, I don't believe that. Mm -mm. Then somebody said that Jerry James is suing him. Nah. People just put stuff out there and run with it. It'll be all over YouTube by this afternoon. Derek James suing Earl Spence. <laughs> it's crazy. I don't believe that for one minute. Mm -mm. Once we're getting close to another hashtag let's talk fashion. We get the preview tomorrow. Ooh, hour and a half. Mm. What's that, Tim? Like 3.30? Oh, yeah, you can talk that out. Just uh, try not to look at the clock too much. That'll make it longer. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, big week plan. We finally going to do this Avengers thing. And bear with me. You know, sometimes history can be boring. And a lot of stuff on the venues is not directly related to boxing. It's, uh, uh, you know, when they open, who runs them? capacity and all that kind of stuff but all these venues are venues where boxing happens at where they have fights at even got the kingdom hall from uh, Saudi Arabia on there <laughs> yeah because they've been putting on some big ones lately the biggest of all as a matter of fact coming from over there Saudis ain't playing. Mm -mm. Fight after fight after fight. The next one is the uh, Undisputed, I think, or is it one before them? I'm not sure. But how's everybody doing this Monday afternoon? Starting out another week. Time is a flying. So we got to keep on moving along with it or we get left behind. 
This is Cat Sports, the box story. Thought out another week, another big week. Got the Larry Holmes coming up Friday. Looking forward to that. I'm learning from these things too. I learned something from the King of the Casuals last week. You remember about Zab Judah being right handed? He fought so good from that self poor stance. I thought he was really left handed. Mm -hmm. But I already knew all everybody that fight from the self poor is not left handed. Everybody fight orthodox is not right handed, but maturity type thing. But I, I, I just thought, assumed Zab was left handed. Yeah. King of the Casuals taught me that. <laughs> well, one hour, that ain't bad. You'll make it. I'll get you to it. Four and a half. That's right. Yeah, and uh, Red Man was talking about uh, boots to stay at 147 and wait for Devin and Tio. And, but um, Devin and Tio, if they do move to 47, you know they're going to duck boots. That's been their pattern. Curry picked. Devin always fights old guys, small guys. Boots need to move on up to 54. Then you got Tim Zhu, Bud, uh, Virgil, Sebastian Fandora, Erickson Lubin. What's the young kid name? Young Puerto Rican kid. Dan the Zionist. Yeah. And those guys will fight Boots. All those guys want to smoke a bunch of burials just like burials wants to smoke at 47 all those guys are getting there with boots mm -hmm. and it would be some pretty competitive fights his boots need to get in there and get his name out there man because he's wasting away mm -hmm. of course he got that out of the ring situation his manager passed and his wife was running it and she's not too uh versed in boxing yeah, he needs to get that uh, settled yesterday. Because the guy hadn't fought since last July. What's that, 10 months now? This is uh, March, you know, about eight, seven, eight months. But, you know, the way this time is going by, it'll be a year. And uh, I don't like boots, man. I just hate to see See what he's going through. I hate to see him go through that, but um, if he can't get the big names, fight somebody. You know, get in there and fight. Because you can spar and train and all that, but nothing is equals up to being in that ring. Getting them hands thrown at you in live action and throwing hands back, you know, in live action. Nothing matches that. Okay. So, yeah. I really want to see Boots get back in there soon. But, but they're saying Cinco de Mayo. I don't know if it's official yet with him and uh, Cody Crowley on Cinco de Mayo on the Canelo card. I, I hope it is. They're going to get started in about five minutes. Everybody all right this Monday, you know? We got the venue show. And we're going to talk about some southpaws. I might have to include some active southpaws on this list because, uh, you know, I mean, switch hitters, switch hitters. Not a whole lot of uh, standout switch hitters in the sport over the years, you know. So I might have to put some guys like Bud. Tyson Fury is a switch hitter, too. Did y'all know that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tyson Fury. Marvin Hagler would be on this one too. Yeah. Uh really don't, re really don't remember him switching a lot, but he wasn't switching. That's how he lost the Sugar Ray fight. He started out orthodox first couple of rounds and lost both of them. That was the difference in the fight. Yeah. I don't know what his strategy was in doing that. Because he didn't usually do that, you know? big super fight like that you do what got you there yeah. and he lost a split decision 
those first couple rounds made the difference. I still think he won, to be honest with you. But if he had to start it out southpaw, the judges probably would have thought he won too. Yeah. But then Sugar Ray Duck, I told you that story. Mm -hmm. Textbook Duck. More people that should be rolling in in a little while. Mm -hmm. We're going to touch on those fights. Pretty good card, sir. Mm -hmm. A lot of UK fighters, but yeah, it was good. Uh, Ricky Hatton's son lost. He was kind of kind of overrated like anyway and where he was at 140 it wasn't too much for him down there anyway at 140 you know all those killers Matias and Devin and Theo and Regis and Josh Taylor and uh, Richardson Hitchens uh, Ramirez Jose Ramirez yeah it wasn't too much for Ricky Hatton see yeah, once he stepped it up yeah he was 14 and 0. He lost the first fight. He probably would have been about 14 and 14 by the time he went through all of them guys. And if you want to make money in this sport, you can't duck the killer flag. You got to fight him. You want to make the big money. It was a good, uh, I was getting ready to go up on the panel uh, last night, but, uh, a couple of them guys um, just rubbed me the wrong way. That guy, George, and then the other guy that was in there for the first time, he kept jumping on Coach Kenny. He was uh, kind of argumentative. I forgot his name. Got that in the right hand corner. He kept putting Tank down, talking about his weather bay. And he didn't come out and say it, but he said Tank is like the ghetto face of boxing or something. He's the face of boxing for the ghetto. <laughs> That's what he was saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I was getting ready to go and then up there, then George came and I said, nah, I can't take him. That's one of them Devonites. I thought Canelo fans was bad, but Devin fans, some, some of them are worse than them. Mm -hmm. Fanatics. That's what fan is short for, fanatic. Okay, let's get ready to start talking about uh, the card Saturday. Oh yeah, but next week, this week coming up here, we are going to have a mm, Pro Box Week, Card Friday, and the big one Saturday. Uh, where is that Vegas, Tim Zhu, and uh, not Sebastian Fedora? And then we got Roly and uh, Pitbull on there. I think Erickson Lubin. This is a good card, top to bottom. Pretty good one Friday, too. A lot of top-ranked young stars. And the uh, female undisputed fight, Austin Valdez headlining. One of the Vargas uh, sons on it. Fernando Vargas' sons. Uh, I think it's Emiliano. Yeah. He's on there, so. Uh, the uh, heavyweight, that's Richard. Uh, this is Richard Torres, the heavyweight guy. Yeah. Good prospects. Mm -hmm. Top rank is loaded with prospects. Justin James in the building. And Joy Finks. Salute, fellas. Justin James, hashtag JBT, that is. Joy Finks, 757. Talking about some of these uh, boxing venues today that give us these fights. You know, they got to have somewhere to fight, you know. where we can see him. Like Madison Square Garden. You see uh, uh, oh man. Barclay Center <laughs> on the screen. Isn't that where Tank and Devin's supposed to be at Barclays? I think. I were up there in New York. Everybody making a big deal because they're from the West Coast. They fight on the East. I don't see it make that big of a difference. They're going to sell all them paper West, East, North, or South. 
Devin and Ryan. I ain't paying no eighty, ninety dollars. I don't know how much it is. I don't think I'll buy Devin and Ryan. Devin will win. He'll dance around and run around the ring all night. And Ryan use that raggedy shoulder roll and when he throw himself out of position, he'll turn his back. Who wants to pay for that? I'm not. <laughs> the West Coast, East Coast, and on the southern border or up there next to Canada, they, they wasn't going to sell all that much wherever they put it. So be it in the East, I don't see where it make all that much difference for them too. But I think Ryan will make it. A lot of people saying that it's not going to uh, happen. It is just jewelry. It's terrible. I don't know what's going on with that. <laughs> yeah, so that show you that Ryan and Tank million. Everybody thought it wasn't Ryan. Ryan had something to do with it, but it was mainly Tank. Cause he ain't coming nowhere near a million with Devin. I thought if they get two hundred thousand, they might get about one fifty. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it shows you right there. It was the face of boxing. Was the reason Ryan and Tank did as well as it did? Okay, now uh. This was from, uh, I think it was Sheffield. Sheffield, England. This car headlined by Dalton Smith and Jose Cepeda. Smith stopped Cepeda in the fifth round with a body shot knockout. Mm, yeah. And straight on to the, to the stomach. Yeah. Uh, now, Smith, um, Kind of started out kind of slow. First couple of rounds was kind of tricky in the early round, but he took control of the fight. The Pater was looking sharp early too, but he walked right into that body shot. In the- mm-hmm. Yeah, Jordan Smith came right down the middle with it, and uh, <laughs> the Pater had kind of a delayed reaction, <laughs> like it stunned him, and then kind of went down in slow motion, and that was it. That was it. Yeah, no more than 500,000, Justin. No doubt. No doubt. Definitely no more than that. But uh, yeah, he got him with a debilitating right hand body shot. And that put him down and out. It was a knockout. He did not get back up. Count it out. So Smith is now 16 and 0. But that was uh. That was 140, I believe. So, yeah. I don't just like Hatton. I don't see Smith doing too much there. But it still wouldn't be satisfied with that European title or British title. Whatever he had hanging over, he had something about hanging over his shoulder. Commonwealth, European, British, one of them titles. I guess you got to be British to care about them. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, he was calling out another English guy, English guy from England, uh, Adam Azim. Yeah. I think Adam Azim would be. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then the uh, women, the co main was a women's uh, title fight. It was um, Sandy Ryan and Terry Harper. Terry Harper is also, that was, I think that was Junior Well, no, Welterweight. Because Terry Harper is currently the champion at uh, Super Welterweight, I believe. But she came down to try to uh, take the belt from uh, Sandy Ryan. Terry Harper did. But she wasn't successful. Wait with me. I'm trying to turn this thing down, but I don't know what's going on. Is it? it is. Yeah, uh she was unsuccessful. Yeah. 
There we go. Oh my goodness. There we go. Bear with me for one second. Okay, that's cool right there. Oh, let's see. Oh, okay. I had a picture of a, a slide of uh, Dawson Smith and uh, Jose. I didn't even put it up there. There you go. That's Dalton Smith and Jose. Okay. Minds never change. It takes forever. That looks like it could be the uh, shot. They put him away right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I believe that's it. <laughs> so, uh, Sandy, uh, Harper, and Terry Ryan was the co-main. They were going for Ryan's uh, junior welterweight strap. I believe it was the WBO. There you go. That's Sandy Ryan putting hands on Terry Harper. Now, Ryan successfully defended your yeah, WBO uh, welterweight. Yeah, welterweight. Terry Harper is actually the uh, junior middleweight champion right now. And um, Ryan was very impressive. It was a one-sided win. She controlled the whole fight. Went to work on um, the body right away. And Harper was trying to work behind straight shots. But... Um, Ryan stayed on the front foot throughout the fight, just kept coming forward. And by the third round, she had Harper hurt and disorganized. And uh, Ryan was just relentless. And in the fourth round, hooks, right hands, just relentless. And uh, Harper made it through the round, but after the round, her corner stopped it. Yeah, it was over. And that was that. Ryan retained her uh, welterweight, WBO welterweight title in the win. Elsewhere, Ismael Davis defeated Troy Williamson. 12 round unanimous decision. Super welterweights. James Flynn. Yeah, Campbell Hatton. Ricky Hatton's son lost. Was a unanimous decision. 10 rounds. Uh, one judge had a 98, 92, 97, 95. I think the one 97, 94 was about right. It wasn't that one-sided, but uh, it was convincing. Win for Flint. Liam Cameron beat Hussein Itaba. Got him out of there in the first round. TKO. That one ended early. Lonnie Lee has made it into the building. The loot. Lonnie Lee. How are you? Boxy Menu Podcast in here. Boxy Menu Podcast Plus. Has everybody got over there resubscribed to the Boxy Menu Podcast? You had to start a new channel. So, everybody, if you haven't resubscribed to him, Boxy Menu Podcast Plus. Salute. And Lonnie Lee, hashtag JBT in the building and another week started back out through that monday got monday over with one down four to go but we got a big boxing week though remember uh pro box week and also friday and saturday called yep that's right friday and saturday called this week Now, um, Thomas Hill in the building, the mayor of YouTube, and also Mike Masick in the building. Hashtag JBT for Thomas Hill, the mayor. That's big. The mayor of YouTube is a member of the JBT. Maybe she went Saturday, Thomas Hill. We had the meeting. It's going to be every Saturday at 1 o'clock. Well, I know in California where you live, but it was early. Uh, 10 o'clock, that's not that early. Three hours behind you. (laughs) 
the salute to everybody. Mike Masick, Thomas Hill, just came into the building. Welcome to another episode of Cat Sports, the Box Story. The Monday afternoon edition we are in. Hope I didn't hide somebody. I just hit something by mistake. Anybody lose their rich? Let me know. <laughs> I then did it a couple of times. And I took Mike Masick by accident. I took Ed McQueen's. I took Thomas Hills, I think. But they all got it back. Yeah. But uh, yeah, let's finish this card but and start on these venues. Um, where was I? Buddha Judge. Only way I know how to pronounce his name is somebody in Biden's cabinet named Buddha Judge. <laughs> Manuel Buddha Judge. I would have butchered that, but I've heard it a lot. Emmanuel Buddha Judge defeated. Oh uh, man, now Bartholomew B. Edge strikes that. Be a point, six rounds, do a shutout, super about the weights. And uh, Conan Murray defeated Edgar Kempsky. Points, six rounds, 60 to 54. And that's it. We're going to talk about some of these venues. Now, bear with me on these venues. You know, sometimes history is boring, but you know, we're going to do it. And you know, first, of course, there's got to be the garden, the granddaddy of them all, called it the most famous arena in the world, Madison Square Garden. Now I gotta find it. And of course, the, the, the profile this week is Larry Holmes, the Eastern assassin himself. Okay, Madison Square Garden, also known as the Garden, or just MSG, right? It's, uh, oh, Thomas, so I was getting ready to go up there last night till George showed up <laughs> on the panel. The guy just rubbed me the wrong way. I might say something wrong, so I stayed in the audience. But anyway, Madison Square Garden is a multi-purpose indoor arena in New York City, located in Midtown Manhattan, between 7th and 8th Avenue, from 31st to 33rd Street, above Pennsylvania Station. Now, this is the fourth venue to bear that name, Madison Square Garden, okay? The first one opened in 1879. The first two. First one opened in 1879, and the second one opened in 1890, respectively. And they were located on Madison Square on East 26th Street. The first one was located on Madison Square in the, uh, on East 26th Street and Madison Avenue. And the third Madison Square Garden opened in 1925. It was further uptown at 8th Avenue and 50th Street. And remember, um, Tex Ricard, the uh, first known promoter in the sport, he had ownership in the 1925 Garden. Yeah, old Tex. He also owned the New York Islanders hockey team until his death. Yeah. Tex was big in sports. He had the first $2 million gate. Yeah, Tex Ricard. Okay. Now, the current garden opened on February 1st, 1968. It's the oldest major sporting arena in the New York metropolitan area. Okay. And it's widely known as the most famous arena in the world. Right, everybody's heard that the garden, the most famous arena in the world, what it's known as. And it is. Okay. Home to the New York Rangers hockey team. They came in 1968 when the current garden opened, and also the uh, New York Knicks of the National Basketball Association, professional basketball team, 
They also came in 1968 when the current garden opened. Post boxing, of course, circuses, and in other many other forms of entertainment, concerts. Now, many of boxing's biggest fights were held at Madison Square Garden, including Sugar Ray Robinson versus Jake LaMotta, two, October 2nd, 1942. That was the only one that Jake won. 10 round decision. Okay. Joe Lewis versus Rocky Marciano. Talked about that fight Friday, October 26, 1951. Marciano stopped 37-year-old shell of his former self, Joe Lewis. Eighth round knockout. Not TKO, knockout. Stopped him. Evander Holyfield versus Lennox Lewis. March 13th, 1999. That was a very controversial split draw. Didn't they fight two times? I believe that was the first one. That was a very controversial split draw. Okay. Most people thought Lewis pulled it out. And Anthony Joshua versus Andy Ruiz. June 1st, 2019. That was AJ's first appearance in the United States. And uh, he shit the bed. <laughs> That's what Jay Harcourt says. <laughs> uh, Andy Ruiz stopped him in the seventh round. AJ was calling around on all fours, remember? Yeah. But he came back and got his title back. Okay. Yeah. That's Madison Square Garden. Next is Caesar's Palace. Okay. You're doing a list on boxing venues and don't have Caesar's Palace on it. That's criminal. That is criminal. Got to hit the palace. Yeah, where was you at? You missed the meeting, sir, Mr. Mayor. But it was a good meeting. Mm -hmm. Very productive. Very productive. Got some things done. Got some people appointed to certain positions. I'm part of the uh, recruitment team. Of course, we more and Ant deals with all that technical, analytical type stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We still got the positions to be filled. And uh, the suggestion was made that they could be filled by somebody that wasn't even in the meeting. So, you know, there's another meeting Saturday at one o'clock. Okay. All is welcome to attend. Accepting all ideas and we got some more positions to be filled. Anybody good at accounting? Need a secretary? Doesn't have to be a female. <laughs> Probably will end up being though. Yeah. Because we expect to have more people as we go along, you know, coming into the meet. So started at one o'clock. But Caesar's Palace is next. Okay. Now, Caesar's Palace is a luxury hotel and casino in Paradise, Nevada, USA. Now, the hotel is situated on the west side of the Las Vegas Strip, between Bellagio and the Mirage. It is one of Las Vegas' largest and best known landmarks, yes, Caesar's Palace. Caesar's Palace was opened in 1966 by a couple of guys named Jay Sarno and Stanley Marlin. And they sought to create an opulent facility that gave guests a sense of a late of a life during the Roman era. Yeah, Roman Empire, excuse me. Roman Empire, Caesar's Palace, get it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, the hotel is operated as a host venue for live music and sports, including boxing. It has a 15,306 seat arena 
to host his boxing shows, okay? In addition to holding boxing matches since the late 1970s, Caesars also hosted the Caesars Palace Grand Prix from 1981 to 1982. Now, the main performance venue is the Coliseum. And that the theater seats 4,296 people. And a, a lot of boxing matches have been held in Caesar's outdoor arena. Okay. And that has since demolished Sports Pavilion. You know, the Sports Pavilion is no more. That was an indoor sports arena. Okay. And these events have been held at uh, Caesar since the late 1970s. And the hotel is host, Caesar's is hosted some of the best fighters and biggest fights in the history of the sport, including Wilfredo Gomez versus Salvador Sanchez, August 21st, 1981, which was won by Salvador Sanchez, eighth round TKO, but it was a very good fight, very good fight. And that fight right there was thought to be the official beginning of the Mexico-Puerto Rico rivalry in boxing. You know, that's that's a classic historic. Puerto Rican Wilfredo Gomez against Mexican Salvador Sanchez. August 21st, 1981 was widely thought to be the fight that began that rivalry between those two countries. Yeah. First one won by the Mexican, Salvador Sanchez. Got him out of there in the eighth round. Okay, also at the Caesars was Larry Holmes versus Jerry Cooney, June 11th, 1982. Yeah, that was a big one there. Yeah, Jerry Cooney was like the great white hope back around that time because, it, it, you know, just wasn't a lot of, uh, you know, white heavyweight champions. And uh, he was a pretty good, pretty good too. But Holmes stopped him in the 13th round. TKO. Cooney kept hitting him low. <laughs> and President Ronald Reagan had a phone set up in Cooney's locker room to call him after the fight, but he didn't have one in Holmes. Okay. But then hastily after the fight, they made arrangements to put one in Holmes. I, I don't think Holmes took the call though. Wasn't that messed up? Didn't he have had a phone in both locker rooms? You know, come on, man. Come on, Ronald Reagan. But that was Ronald Reagan. Okay, also at Caesars, Marvin Hagler versus Roberto Duran. November 10th, 1983. 15th round unanimous decision. Now, it's been said, I saw that fight, and I watched it over plenty of times. It said that Roberto Duran was leading on all three judges' cards after the 13th round. I didn't agree with that. But, um, Hagler did what he had to do in those last three rounds and pulled it out. Good fight, though. If you're into watching old fights, that's a good one. Marvin Hagler with Bertolt Duran. And, you know, everybody would have thought that would have been a brawl. It was a very technical fight between those two guys, which was very surprising. Yeah. A lot of movement, footwork, outside fighting. And everybody was expecting a brawl. Yeah, but they surprised everybody. Mm -hmm. The way the fight went. Yeah. Also at Caesars, Marvin Hagler versus Sugar Ray Leonard. Probably. April 6, 1987. Sugar Ray did not win that fight, but they gave it to him. And then, of course, I told you the story. He ducked Hagler. He did not want to get back in that ring with him. Because you've been in the ring with a man 15 rounds. No, I think that was 12 at that time. You know. And Sugar Ray ducked him. Like I told you, Hagner waited 14 months before he retired. But Sugar Ray retired after the fight. So Hagner wanted the rematch. He waited 14 months for his rematch. Sugar Ray was adamant about being retired. So after 14 months, Hagner retired. And guess what? A month later, Sugar Ray came out of retirement. Now, isn't that a duck? Now, what Hagler should have done, the next month, he should have came back. <laughs> Just to see what Sugar Ray probably would have retired again. But that's the duck. 
I love Sugar Ray. That's, he's from the Maryland, and that was one of my favorite fighters. But that was a duck there. You got to call it for what it is. Okay. He didn't even wait. He should have waited at least six months. He came back the next month. Okay, how can I retire to seek to come back now? Yes, Sugar Ray, you ducked him. And then finally, at, also at Caesar, with, with Caesars, was he, he ran the Holyfield versus Riddick Bowl. Okay. And this was a one. No, this I think this was the second one. Because Bo wasn't the first one. This was the one at Caesars where the man came in the ring on the, I don't know what he was on. He parachuted or something right in the ring. And they beat his ass, too. <laughs> I think Bo would have won that one, too. But that upset him. I think that affected Bo more. But yeah, some guy came out of the air and landed right in the ring. I still don't know what he came in there on. And they beat him up. Yeah. Go back and look at it. Holyfield won it. Yeah, they was fighting, and all of a sudden this guy just blew. <laughs> came down in the ring on some kind of parachute. They call him parachute man. The Holyfield won it. Uh, um, it was a 12 round majority decision. Okay, very close. Very close fight. But the real loser was parachute man, because everybody just dumped on him, man. Mm hmm. I think the referee even got a couple swings in on him. <laughs> I know the security put something on him. Yeah. Okay, that's Caesar on Dallas. Yeah, and um, this week, that's another big week. Uh, I'm going to, uh, tomorrow, have uh, some of the top switch hitters of all time. And I'm going to try to do the top power punchers in the same, squeeze all those into tomorrow top switch hitters and top power punches. And uh, I know I usually don't include active fighters on my list, but this time I might for the switch hitters because it's not a whole lot of standout switch hitters over the years. So I might have to put old Bud on there, you know. Well, Tyson Fury, Tyson Fury's a switch hitter. Pretty good. Mm -hmm. So I might have to include a few active guys on the top switch hitters list. But we'll see, that's tomorrow though, don't miss it. And top power guys. Al Booger ain't in here. I know he might call the police on me if I don't put Rocky on there. <laughs> Al Booger got Rocky number one for power punches after Friday. He was putting Susie Q on him. Oh, man. Okay. Yeah, that was number two. That's Caesar's up on the screen. Okay. Everybody okay this Monday afternoon? What you got now left him a half hour? Or an hour. But you'll make it. Go get a cup of coffee or something. I know you got your earpiece in or something. Okay. Next up on the list was the thumbnail. Uh, Y'all like that thumbnail? The MGM Grand. Wasn't that the thumbnail? No. No, no, no. Barclays was the thumbnail. That was going to be the thumbnail. But Barclays, I think Barclays was better. Yeah. Okay. So next on the list is the MGM Grand, Las Vegas. You know, MGM Grand would have to be on there too. That turned into Floyd's home, remember? After a certain point in his career, Floyd never left MGM Grand. Well, like, it was a whole bunch of, I don't know how many it was, but he had a whole lot of fights there straight to end his career. Yeah, Floyd Mayweather. Everybody hitting the like button for me, please. For the box story, yeah. Appreciate it. Next up is the MGM Grand Arena. Of course, it's in Las Vegas, Nevada. Or Paradise, Nevada. Yeah. Paradise. I never been there. And my I got a sister in law that lives there. Mm -hmm. My wife's sister lives there. In Paradise. And I had is to live in Paradise. Wow. But that's what's next. The Rise Podcast in the building. And D for the win. Salute to the Rise Podcast. The closer. And D for the win. We are doing... Uh, talking about some of these boxing venues. Some of these great arenas. Where our sport takes place at. You know. Because they got to have somewhere to fight at. Right. And there's been some good ones over here. So far I did... Uh, the granddaddy of them all, Madison Square Garden. 
known as the most famous arena in the world. And we did Caesar's Palace. Like I was saying, you can't do a boxing venue's list and leave Caesar's Palace off. That would be criminal, you know? That would be criminal. They come in and lock me up if I ain't put Caesar's Palace on there. But the Rise Podcast, the closer for the JBT. 9 p.m. Monday through Fridays. 12 p.m. on Sundays. And during the week, they shut it down. Save the best for last. They turn out the lights and close the door on the JBT day. We started all over in the morning with Jay Hardcore himself. Let's talk about this uh, MGM Grand. But salute to the Rise Podcast and D4 the Win in the building. Yeah, that's the uh, MGM on the screen there. Okay. Now, the MGM Grand, of course, in Las Vegas, Paradise, Nevada. It's a hotel and casino located on the Las Vegas Strip. Okay. In Paradise, Nevada, like I said. It's owned by BC Properties and operated by MGM Resorts International. Now, the original MGM Grand opened on the Strip in 1973. And it was renamed Bally's in 1986, okay? So this wasn't the first MGM Grand. The other one is now called Bally's. Now, the current one opened in December, on December 18th, 1993, okay? And uh, the first boxing event at the new one was held a little over a month later after it opened on January 29th, 1994 at the uh, 16,800 seat Grand Garden Arena. Yeah, y'all done heard of that. That's where these fights happen at. The Grand Garden Arena. Seats almost 17,000 people. And it usually be jam packed. Now that fight was between, now the 1996 fight between Mike Tyson and Bruce Seldon was held there. And it was attended by rapper Tupac Shakur shortly before his death later that same night, right? Tupac had gotten into a fight with gang member Orlando Anderson in the hotel lobby before being shot later that night. So Tupac was at the, uh, at right here, the Mike Tyson fight, the same night of his death. Mm-hmm. Now, um, with 5,000 rooms, the new MGM Grand it was the largest hotel in the world at the time of its opening. It's been passed now, but at the time that it opened, it was the largest hotel in the world. And besides the Grand Garden Arena, it has several other venues, entertainment venues, including a casino that was also the largest casino in the world at the time of the opening. Okay, but well, you know how that goes. Somebody open up one, then you gotta have one open somewhere else that's bigger so they can have that title. But at the time of this opening, MGM Grand had the largest hotel and largest casino in the world. And here are some of the big fights that have taken place at the MGM Grand. You know Floyd gotta be on this list. That was Floyd's home. Okay. Mike Tyson versus Evander Holyfield. June 28, 1997. That was one. That wasn't the bite fight. <laughs> that was this is the first one. Okay. Yeah, the bite fight was the uh second one. Yeah, the bite fight was the second one. And uh this one was won by um Holyfield too. Holyfield won both of them. Tyson got disqualified in the second one, of course. Holyfield won this one by uh he, he stopped Tyson in the eleventh round. TKO. Remember that. Floyd Mayweather versus Austin De La Hoya was their big pay-per-view. That was the highest at one time, I believe, before uh um who was Floyd's fight first? Manny or Canelo, I can't remember. But both of them passed Floyd and Austin. But Floyd and Austin had the record, had the had the title at one time. Now Floyd won that fight, uh 12 rounds 50 city. Now you know how people always talk about um 
Castillo and uh, uh, what's the other guy name? The guy that Ford State bit him. They always talk about them two as almost beating Floyd. I think Oscar came the closest to beating Floyd that night right there. Man. Yeah. But Oscar ran out of gas at the end. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that was Floyd's closest call right there, I think, was to Oscar. Floyd also fought Manny Pacquiao there, yeah. And he fought Oscar May 5th, 2007. He fought Manny almost eight years later to the day, May 2nd, 2015. Now, we wanted Floyd Manny about five years before that, okay? We thought, everybody thought that was five years too late. We wanted him again. Actually, it was it was Money Mayweather. We wanted Manny and Pretty Boy Floyd. But either one would beat him, I think. Yeah, Floyd won 12-round unanimous, unanimous decision. Dominated him, yeah. His usual defensive style and uh, hit and not get hit, yeah. He would have uh, probably would have been worse with Pretty Boy because Pretty Boy was a little bit more offensive, you know. Yeah, but Manny was Manny was bad around that time. 2001, 2010 decade. Manny was the fighter of that entire decade, man. So yeah, the Pretty Boy would have got it too. Also, at MGM was Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury. That was the uh, second one. I think. Which one was the seventh round TKO? Was that the second? I know the first one was the draw, but this wasn't the first one. Yeah, I think the third one was earlier than that. So that had to be the second one. But this one was at the MGM Grand, where Fury stopped Wilder in the seventh round. Anybody know? I think that was the second one. Pretty sure. And then Canelo Alvarez versus Cater Plant was also at MGM Grand. And, uh, that was on November 6th. Wilder and Fury was February 22nd, 2020. And uh, Canelo and Caleb Plant was November 6th, 2021. Remember Caleb Plant and asking Canelo, how you doing? Come on, man. You guys getting there with Canelo like they um, starstruck and stuff. I thought Jamel was going to ask him for his autograph in one of those press conferences. The way he was looking at Canelo, like he was his idol and stuff. That wasn't Jamel. Jamel used to be damn near ready to fight at the press conference, but he was very subdued against Canelo. I was like, please don't ask him for his autograph, Jamel. Please don't. Don't do that, man. Mm. But anyway, Canelo beat Plant by 11th round TKO that night at the uh, MGM Grand. Yep. Next up will be the Boardwalk, the old Boardwalk Hotel in Atlantic City, New Jersey. I've been to a couple there back in the days, man. Atlantic City used to be one of the spots, man, for fights back in the day. That's the old Boardwalk right there. Yeah. Donald Trump used to be up there. Don King. Mm -hmm. Boots had a fight. Uh, I don't know if it was here, but somewhere in New Jersey, Atlantic City last year. I don't know if it was in the old Boardwalk Hotel. I don't even know if this place still open, tell you the truth. Yeah, but the Boardwalk Hotel. It was formerly known as the Atlantic City Convention Center. Yeah. Yeah, I've been to fights when it was called that too. That is the City Convention Center, yeah. It's a multi-purpose indoor arena in Atlantic City, New Jersey. That was the primary convention center in Atlantic City. Until the new one opened, Atlantic City Convention Center, the new one opened in 1997. Okay. So the boardwalk might not be stupid. I'm going to have to check on that. Now, the boardwalk hall was declared a U.S. National Historic Landmark in 1987. It's one of the few surviving buildings from the city's early heyday as a seaside resort. Oh, yeah. For, um, yeah. D for the winter and rise. That's came in. I'm going to, tomorrow's going to be, uh, some of the top switch hitters of all time and some of the top power punches both of those are going to be in the same day like 10 top switch hitters and 10 top power punches and i know i don't usually put active guys but it's not a whole lot of i was you know stand out switch hitters that i can think of so i might have to put old bud and tyson fury and a few active guys on there yeah tyson fury's a switch hitter. pretty good one too mm -hmm. yeah but back to the uh 
the old Boardwalk Hotel in AC. This is number four. It was declared uh, a historic uh, national historic landmark. Okay. Now the maximum capacity at the Boardwalk is fourteen thousand seven hundred seven. It's almost 15,000 people for boxing, ice hockey, concerts, and various other, various other types of sports and entertainment. Boardwalk hosted the Miss America pageant for decades. Yeah, I don't think it does anymore, but yeah, remember Bob Barker and the Miss America pageant? That was up in the Boardwalk in Atlanta City for years and decades, man, remember? Miss mm-hmm. America. There she goes, Mr. America. Now this venue opened in 1929. Mm. It was built due to an initiative led by former mayor, Edward L. Bader, who was mayor from 1924 until 1927. Now he didn't get to see it through to his death. He died before they built it, but he was the one that started the project, got it off the ground. Mayor Edward L. Bader. Okay. It has been home to a lot of boxing over the years. Okay. Mike Tyson fought in Boardwalk Hall several times as heavyweight champion, including four of his seven defenses when he was undisputed. Okay. He was two belt undisputed. Because they didn't, you know, they only had the WB. No, he might have been three. They had the WB, AWBC, and uh, IBF. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mike was three belt because they had the IBF. IBF came in the early 80s, yeah. They had the WBO, yeah. But he fought, um, he fought four of his seven defenses as undisputed champion in the old Boardwalk Hall, yeah. And here are a few of the other big fights that took place at this venue. Mike Tyson versus Larry Holmes, remember that one? Yeah, that was at the old Boardwalk Hall in Atlantic City. January 12th, 1988. Of course, Mike knocked Larry out in the fourth round. Larry had no business still in there. But he said Don King came to him with $3 million. <laughs> and Larry said, he said, give it here. First he told Don King no. Then Don King said, I got $3 million for him. Then he told Don King yes. The three mil, 88, yeah. Also at the boardwalk was Mike Tyson versus Michael Spinks, the 92nd fight. Remember that one? That was at the old boardwalk. Told you the old boardwalk hosted some big fights back in the day, yeah. Of course, first round knockout Michael Spinks. I think, what was it, 90 seconds? 90 seconds. And that was June 27th, 1988. That's like six months after the Holmes fight. Yeah, Tyson was, mm, yeah, he was fighting. He fought 11 times in one year, one year. But he was a prospect. Prospects don't even fight that much nowadays. Just do boxing the voice in the building that's someone warming you up for mr four o'clock shorty himself okay salute to just do boxing the voice in the building okay yeah um holmes tyson spinks tyson both took place there like six months apart you've had the holy field versus george foreman told you there's some big fights up in Boardwalk Hall. Is this Boardwalk Hall, man? Wow, yeah. I didn't even know all these big fights took place up there. Damn. And of course, um, Holy Field got the 12 by unanimous decision on April 19th, 1991. What? This fight took place there? Floyd Mayweather versus Artero Gotti was in the old Boardwalk Hall, man. I told you. Mm, mm, mm. Remember that one? Boy, but just tattooing that man. I was standing up, hollering at the TV, stop it, stop it. That was bad. Floyd told him, and Gotti was from New Jersey. Floyd told him he was going to come up there and beat his butt. That he just wasn't going to beat it. He was going to beat his butt, and he did it. It was a uh, six round TKO. They stopped it. It was hidden to be a KO. So, yeah. But they stopped it before it got to that point. <laughs> yeah. Aunt McQueen in the building. Salute Aunt McQueen. We are going over some of the venues that host our support today. Mm-hmm. 
we're on the boardwalk hall and um they had to some big i didn't even know they had all these big fights in boardwalk hall floyd and Gotti was there yeah floyd mayweather arturo Gotti, june 25th 2005. i didn't even know the boardwalk was still hosting fights in 2005. and kelly Pavlik and bernard hopkins was there october 18th 2008. man yeah, the boardwalk has some big fights up in that bad boy, man. Of course, B Hop uh, was 43 years old at that time. And he won a 12 round unanimous decision. B Hop wasn't nowhere near ready to stop. Okay, check this out. He was 43 years old at the time of this fight. And he fought for another eight years and 11 more fights. He didn't retire until um 2016. So you would have thought 43, yeah, that's gonna be his last fight. No, it wasn't. He had fought eight more years and uh 11 more fights. The oldest man to ever win a championship in boxing. I think it was 51, wasn't he? 50 something. But yeah, he went on eight more years after that, 11 more fights. Bernard Hopkins. Oh, that guy knocked him through the ropes. Was that Joe Smith? knocked him through the ropes. We got talking about a white guy ain't gonna never be me. The white guy knocked him through the ropes. <laughs> yeah. So that was uh, the old boardwalk hall. Now, this was the thumbnail here. I don't like this thumbnail. I keep it simple because I ain't got no choice. I don't know how to get it any more complex. Barclays Center. That's next. Ain't that where uh, Devin and Ryan gonna be at? Barclays, right? I think. Yeah. Yeah, Justin, you talking about that uh, Florida and Gotti? That was bad, man. I was howling at the TV, man, stop it. I can't, I think it's corners finally stopped it in six. But see, had that been now, 2024, that fight stopped after like the third or fourth round. But you know, 2005, you get a little bit more leeway back then. But now, yeah, it went nowhere near six. I mean, he was tattooing it. Yeah. Oh, Jerry got it. Bless his soul. He passed away. He probably still had some of the marks on him. I mean, is that bad? No, the floor was tattooing him. It, it was bad, man. I saw it. And that's what Floyd, exactly what he said he was going to do. Remember? He said he's not, and that Gaddy was from it, New Jersey, remember? And Floyd said he's not just coming to beat him, he's coming to beat him, beat him. And, he, and that's what he did. That was Pretty Boy. Pretty Boy was more offensive than Money made, you know. That's why we wanted to see that version of Floyd fight Manny, like 09, 2010. They gave, they gave it to us five years too late. But Barclays Center is next. Okay. On our list of venues, they bring us these, uh, bring us our, our fights, you know. Barclays Center is a multi-purpose of indoor arena in the New York City borough of Brooklyn. Home to the Brooklyn Nets of the National Basketball Association and the New York Liberty of the Women's National Basketball Association, okay? I think it was, yeah, yeah, the Nets, because the Nets used to be in uh, New Jersey somewhere, somewhere like that, I think. Now, the arena also hosts boxing, concerts, conventions, and other sporting and entertainment events, okay? Well, man, this is number, uh, number I want to, five, it's 318 already. That's crazy. It was just quarter to three, like 10 minutes ago. Now it's 3.18. Wow. Okay. But yeah, Barclays hosts the uh, uh, National Basketball Association's Brooklyn Nets and the National the WNBA, uh, New York Liberty. Right? Now, it opened on September 21st, 2012. First event was a Jay-Z concert on September 28, 2012. 
just a week after it opened. Well, a, two, couple, yeah, a week after it opened. Just a week after it opened. Now, the first boxing show at Barclays was held on October 13th, 2012. That was about a month after it opened. October 3rd, October 3rd, 2012, okay? I don't know who it was, but that's when the first boxing match was, okay? Sorry, I didn't write. I should have found out who it was. Hmm. Now, Barclays is owned by the State of New York Empire State Development Authority. Now, according to Billboard magazine, Barclays Center past Madison Square Garden as the highest building venue in the U.S. for concerts and family shows. Not counting sports events, okay? I get ready to say, not counting sports events, just for concerts and uh, family shows. But yeah, no, no way it passed the guard mm -mm. when it comes to sports events. Mm -mm. Yeah, that was for concerts and family shows. Now Barclays had a seat, has a seating capacity for boxing of sixteen thousand people. You can fit 16,000 people in there for fights, okay? Not bad. You think Ryan and Devin gonna get 16,000 in there, anybody? Justin, you think Ryan and Devin gonna get 16,000 in there? <laughs> Salute GP. Gregory Pratt, hashtag JBT, AKA GP. What's up, GP? How you doing this afternoon? Good to see you. Just going over some venues today. That hosts our great sport that we love, boxing. I heard uh, Jay Hardcore Rise say that first. I copied it. The great sport we love called boxing. One of them said it. They don't mind me using it. <laughs> yeah. But I'm just talking about some of the venues that host this great sport we love called boxing. Okay. Now I'm on Barclays Arena. Yeah, that's where Devin and Ryan is. I got it written down right here in my notes. It's the location for the upcoming fight between Devin Haney and Ryan Garcia on April 20th. You think they're going to fill it up? It's, you can get 16000 in there. Anybody think they're going to fill it up? Justin said he don't think. They might, but he don't think so. I don't think so either, Justin. <laughs> oh, Lord. I just hit somebody. God damn it. I unhit it. I'm sorry, GP. My big fingers. I hit you, but I unhit you. He was only hitting for a second. <laughs> oh, GP said, no, he don't think it's going to. I don't think so either, GP. Nope. My big fingers, man. But you back. Didn't lose your wrench. Oh, wait a minute. Did you? No. Oh, yes, you did. Damn, Gregory. Took your wrench, man. I got to get that back. Okay, your wrench is back. And my big fingers. Yeah, GP, you got your wrench back. There we go. Yeah. Yeah, he got it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's it's the location for the fight between Devin and Ryan coming up. Yeah. Thought it was. And also, here are some other fights that have taken place at Barclays. Danny Garcia versus Zab Judah, April 27, 2013. Danny won a 12-round unanimous decision from Zab. Paulie Malinaji versus Adrian Broner. That was on June 22, 2013. AB took that one. 12-round split decision. Deontay Wilder versus Robert Hellenius. Oh, that was, uh, when was that? That was recently. I forgot the date. Anyway, Deontay got a... Uh, was that last year or the year before? 22, 21, something like that. Anyway, it was the first round knockout. <laughs> remember? I know everybody remember that. Javante Davis, the face of boxing, versus Jose Pedraza, January 14, 2007. Javante Davis got a seventh round TKO. And there's the face of boxing again. Javante Davis versus Roley Romero, May 28th, 2022. The face of boxing got a six-round knockout. TKO, TKO in that one. 
really got up, but the referee wouldn't let him continue. Because it was getting ready to get bad for him. It would have been a KO. If that man would have sent Roley back out there, that would have been a KO. Because Roley's legs was gone. Remember, he's walking to the back with his father. His father had to hold him up. So, yeah. It's a good thing they kept the face of boxing off of him. Because that was getting ready to be bad. But anyway, that was Barclays. Now, let's go overseas to some of these great arenas we got overseas. Because it ain't just the United States now. We got some great arenas overseas. And, of course, we're going to start with a Wembley. Wembley Arena. Right next to Wembley. Now, a lot of these fights are in Wembley Stadium. But they do have a stadium and arena right next to it. Okay. Now, if it came down to Tyson, Fury, Anthony Joshua, it would probably be in the stadium with seats 80,000. And they would probably fill it up. But there's a Wembley Stadium. And the Wembley Arena both have hosted some big fights, okay? But I'm talking about the arena today, right? Now, Wembley Arena is an indoor arena. Next to Wembley Stadium in Wembley, London, England. And it's now known as the OVO Arena for sponsorship purposes. You know how they take on those corporate names. But boxing fans, it'll always be Wembley Arena, you know. Yeah. I didn't even ever know it was OVO until the week when I was writing, when I was doing this research and this stuff. That's some kind of company or something, but it's, it's Wembley Arena. Now, the arena, like I said, the stadium is 80,000. The arena is 12,500 seat facility. Okay. And it's the second largest indoor arena in, in, in London, next to the O2, which I'm going to go over in a minute. And it's the ninth in the entire country entire United Kingdom. Second largest in London and ninth in the entire United Kingdom. Wow. That was originally known as the Empire Pool, right? It opened in 1934. It was built for the 1934 um, British Empire Games. And it was, as the name suggests, it was used for the swimming events. Okay? Now, it was also used for the 1948 Summer Olympics in London for various events, okay? Now, the modern arena is now used for music, comedy, family entertainment, and, of course, boxing and other sports. On February 1st, 1968, it was changed from the uh, Empire Pool to Wembley Arena. Now, during the 1948 Summer Olympics, the venue hosted the Olympic boxing, diving, swimming, and water polo. That should have been up there, but it's here. Okay. Then in 1968, that's when the name, it was still the Empire Pool during the Olympics in 48. 68, it was changed to Wembley Arena. Now, it also hosted, you know, London had the Olympics again in 2012, remember? That's the one Earl was in, remember? It hosted the, uh, some events that year in the Summer Olympics too at the Wembley. The Wembley Stadium and Wembley Arena. Wembley Stadium had a whole lot of them, track and field, you know. And as far as boxing, Wembley has hosted some of the biggest fights that has ever been seen in Europe. Here are a few of them. Muhammad Ali versus Henry Cooper, June 18th, 1963. Okay. It wasn't Wembley Arena. It was still an Empire Pool. Then, but... No, I think that might have been in Wembley Stadium. I'm not sure. But it was in one of the Wembleys, Ali and Cooper. Ali won by fifth round TKO after being pre- being put on the seat of his pants by Cooper. Yeah, Cooper put him down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Tim Witherspoon versus Frank Bruno, July 19th, 1986. Witherspoon got 11th round TKO. Carl Roach versus George Groves, May 31st, 2014. Roach got a ninth round TKO. Anthony Joshua versus Vladimir Klitschko, April 29th, 2017. Joshua got 11th round TKO. And Tyson Fury versus Dylan White, Dillian White, April 23rd, 2022. Yeah, I remember that. We all saw that one. Fury got a uh, sixth round TKO. Now, Let's go to the old York Hall, still in still in the UK. 
still in the UK. We're going to stay overseas for the last four. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, the last four is overseas venues. Okay, I did the United States first. Finished up with the overseas. I cannot believe how this time is moving. Remember, I just said 3.18. Now it says 3.30. Come on, man. That wasn't no 12 minutes. That was like two minutes. But anyway, the old York Hall, officially known as York Hall Leisure Center. It's a multi-purpose indoor arena and leisure center in Bessonall Green, London. Opened in 1929 with a capacity of 1,200. And is now an uh, international boxing venue. Mostly hosts a lot of amateurs, events, and young fighters. Okay, you know, 1,200. You ain't gonna have that, you know, uh, Tyson Fury fight there, right? Okay. But it's still an old classic boxing place. A lot of, uh, a lot of young, I'm gonna tell you, I mean, a lot of, well, a lot of, Future heavyweight fighters, future champions started their careers in Old York Hall. Now, the main hall also hosts concerts and other live events. And other facilities also include a local gymnasium and a swimming pool. The building was officially opened in 1929 by the Duke and Duchess of York, named after them, York Hall. It started hosting boxing events in the 1950s. It's currently owned by Tower Hamlet Council. The building was threatened with closure in 2004, but received a major refurbishment in a joint project between the local Tower Hamlet, the owners, and Greenwich Legion. The venue is where the likes of Anthony Joshua and Tyson Fury had performed. Both men won Amateur Boxing Association Super Heavyweight Crowns. That's some kind of amateur system they have over there in, in, in the UK or Europe. And also have boxed there as professionals, okay? Now the following fighters began their careers at Historic York Hall and all of them are former or current champions. Tyson Fury started his career there. Carl Froch began his career there. David Hay, Herbie Hay, Hyde, and Lennox Lewis all started their careers in old York Hall. Okay. Let's move on to the O2. That's where Mr. Shields and Savannah Marshall was at. First saw a women's card, I'll tell you about it. There's the O2. No, that's not the O2. That's the O2. Okay. Things look, look like a spaceship. Like something like the mothership. I've been on the mothership. Yeah, it's similar to that, you know. Okay, the O2 Arena, commonly known as the O just the O2, got the arena. Multi-purpose indoor arena in the center of the O2 Entertainment District on the Greenwich Peninsula in Southeast London. It opened in its present form in 2007. It has the second highest seating capacity of any indoor venue in the United Kingdom behind the Manchester Arena or the AO. We'll talk about that in a minute too. And in 2008 was the world's busiest music arena. Not just the UK, the world's busiest music, music arena in 2008. Okay. As of 2022, it was the ninth largest building in the world. The O2 has a capacity of 20,000 and it opened on June 24, 2007. It was named after the telecommunications company O2. It has a corporate name and the telecommunications company O2 is the primary sponsor of the venue. Has featured entertainers such as Michael Jackson, and Prince. It was hosted to some events during the 2012 Olympics in London. On October 15, 2022, the O2 hosted a boxing match between Clarissa Shields and Savannah Marshall. That was the first time two female boxers headlined at a major venue in the United Kingdom. The fight was also the first all-female boxing card in the United Kingdom. Yep. Remember A.B. and was it Michaela Mayer was on there? And a few other women's cards. Good, great card, too. 
here are some of the fights that have been taking place at the O2. Okay. Carl Froach versus Mikel Kessler, May 25th, 2013. Froach won a 12 round unanimous decision. Anthony Joshua versus Dillian White, December 12th, 2015. Joshua uh, stopped uh, White in the first round. Genevieve Golovkin, better known as Triple G, versus Kell Brook was held at the O2, September 10th, 2016. Of course, Golovkin stopped Brook in the fifth round, broke his orbital socket, Earl Brook the other one, like I was just saying. Clarissa Shields versus Savannah Marshall, October 15th, 2022. Shields got a UD, 10 round UD, and Alicia Baumgartner versus Michaela Mayer. Same date. Same card, October 15th, 2022. 10th round UD. It was split decision. 10th round. They were both part of that all first all female card. Okay, in the UK. Okay. And next up is the Manchester Arena. Better known as the AO Arena. Okay. Better known as the AO. The old Manchester Arena. And it's called the AO for sponsorship reasons. That's some kind of corporate company over there in London, you know. Of course, it's an indoor arena in Manchester, England. Immediately north of the city center and partly above Manchester Victoria Station. Now, the arena has the highest seating capacity of any indoor venue in the United Kingdom. And the fifth largest in Europe for a capacity of 21,000. You can get 21,000 people in that joint. It opened on July 15th, 1995. And it's one of the world's busiest indoor arenas, you know, including sports and entertainment, music, circuses. One of the busiest in the world, the AO. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I was just saying, hosting music, sports other types of entertainment, boxing, porch boxing, and swimming. Now, the arena was temporarily closed following a terrorist attack, I remember that, on May 22nd, 2017. I didn't never knew that was the AO till this weekend, but I remember that terrorist attack. Never made the connection that it was the AO. A suicide bomber killed 22 people and wounded 500 more. One of them did include himself in that 22. Or the 23, including itself, I don't know. It was a suicide bomb. And when was it 500? It was at the, remember, at the end of an Ariana Grande concert. I know y'all remember that. Yeah. It's the AO, one of our boxing spots, man. Damn. Now, we opened uh, on September 9th, 2017, about four months after the closing. Yeah. Now, many boxers have had fights in this. AO, such as Amir Khan, Jermaine Johnson, Ricky Hatton, Joe Kalzaki, Mike Tyson, and David Hay. Hatton from Manchester later became a regular and a fan favorite at the arena. And here are a few of the uh, fight, other fights that were contested at the AO. Mike Tyson went over there against Julius Francis, January 29, 2000. Mike got him out of there in the second round. Ricky Hatton, fan favorite, versus Kostya Zhu, June 4th, 2005. Ricky got a uh, 10th round, 11th round decision over uh, Kostya Zhu. Tyson Fury versus Vladimir Klitschko, July 9th, 2016. 12 round unanimous, unanimous decision for Tyson. I could have sworn I said. No, that was actually Joshua and Vladimir Klitschko. That was at the other place. I, I know I saw Vladimir Klitschko. That was Joshua. Okay. Katie Taylor versus Vivian Obernall, December 10th, 2016. Katie won by 0.6 rounds. She was just a prospect then. And of course, everybody remember this one. Savannah Marshall versus Franchon Cruz Discern, July 1st, last year. 2023. I was at the AO and Savannah got a majority decision in 10 rounds. 
I don't know how one of them judges gave Franchon a draw. I don't know where they found five rounds to get Franchon at, man. I gave her two at the most, and I was being nice to her. Yeah. I do not understand that, man. How Franchon got five rounds out of that fight. I had Savannah unanimous. Franchon came out there one round and just got off the stool and went straight to the middle of the ring and clinched. Now, clinching is necessary and it's a mean a method to it, but just to start in the round. Yeah. That's all she did the entire fight, man. Like she was that sport called rugby. She was pulling, pushing, doing everything, man. Yeah. But um, yeah, but but the right person got the win. I don't think the score was right, but 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 uh Savannah got the win. And that was for unanimous too, 168. But since then, Franchon got one belt back because um her and Sadeja fought. Savannah dropped the WBC, remember, because she was champion in recess, and uh Franchon beat Sadeja for it. So but um I haven't heard anything about them fighting again because Franchon Savannah would have the first shot at it. She won it because she was a champion in recess, but uh, neither one of them had fought since then her off of Franchon. When was that fight between Franchon and Shadeja, like September or something? I thought for sure we would have had uh, the rematch between Franchon and Savannah by now, but nope, haven't got it. Franchon said she wanted it, haven't heard from Savannah. Okay, last but certainly not least, it's going to be Kingdom Hall in Saudi Arabia. The Saudis are coming, man. Kingdom Hall in Saudi Arabia. I couldn't find a good thing. That, that, that's it. Kingdom Hall in Saudi Arabia. Kingdom Arena. Damn, I said Kingdom Hall. <laughs> Kingdom Arena. <laughs> Not Kingdom Hall. <laughs> and so Kingdom Arena in Saudi Arabia, right? Okay. Had to put the Saudis on here, man, because they coming. They got the big heavyweight undisputed fight coming up. Is it another card before then? I'm not sure. Kingdom Arena in Saudi Arabia. It's an associated football. They mean soccer over there. They call soccer football over there. Stadium located in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. The stadium seats 26,000 spectators in its soccer configuration. And it has a retractable roof. Kingdom Arena was built in 180 days and accommodates more than 30,000 people, including 20 luxury boxes. Okay. Just said it has a capacity of 26. Well, that's in the soccer configuration. Okay. But they can uh, add seats. And it has uh, 20 luxury boxes built in 180 days. Wow six months it has a retract and it just opened too it has a retractable roof and a four-sided video screen suspended over the center on february 8th 2024 kingdom arenas received two guinness world records for the longest covered uh longest covered soccer stadium and the highest capacity for an indoor covered stadium. Now ground was broke to begin building this place in uh, 1923. And it was completed in 19, 2000, oh, 2022, it was completed in 2024. Now the first football match was played on January 29, 2024 between Al Hilal and later Miami. Now Saudi Arabia has become a huge boxing city. It seems overnight. Right, and boxing fans are right now looking forward to the undisputed heavyweight championship coming up between, uh, of course, Tyson Fury and Olusander Usyk, and a few of the other fights that's just happened within like the past six months over there. You know, everybody remembers the Day of Reckoning card. You know, Anthony Joshua, Otto Wallen. Joshua got him out fifth round. Deontay Wilder, Joseph Parker got a 12th round unanimous decision. Daniel D. Boyce, Jerome Miller, 10th round TKO. Demetri Bivol, Lyndon Arthur, 12th round unanimous decision. One of only two fights that didn't go the distance on that card. Ajit Carbayel, Austin Beck, Bakhmadar. That was 
my favorite one then. Fourth round TKO. Yeah. Okay. And that's the venues that we have for you today. Quarter to the wall, 15 minutes before the voice. Tomorrow is going to be uh, some of the top um, witch hitters and some of the top power punches of all time. Okay? That's tomorrow. On Cast Sports, the box story. Don't miss that. And then, uh, when are we going to start going through these decades and decade by decade and uh, looking at some boxing history through the decades, some significant events that occurred in the decade, and uh, some of the top fighters or fights that happened. We're going to go decade by decade, a different decade each day. And that starts Wednesday. Don't forget, Friday is uh, the profile, the Eastern Assassin himself, Larry Holmes. Okay, so another big week planned for you. And remember, we got a big week. We got um, Pro Box Wednesday. We got a boxing card Friday, headlined by Oscar Valdez. We got a women's undisputed fight on the card. Sinise Estrada against uh, somebody. And then remember, Saturday is the big one. It was supposed to be Tim Zoo and Keith Thurman, remember, but it's Tim Zoo and the Towering Inferno. Rolly and Pitbull on the card. Uh, and Friday is one of the top ranked cards, so you're going to see a lot of good young fighters. You know, top rank is loaded with good young fighters, and they're going to be on display Friday. Let's go over it right quick since I got 15 minutes. Okay, y'all don't mind me. I appreciate everybody sticking with me. You know, so the venue show could get a little boring, but sometimes history is boring. But we got to know this history, you know. But we got to it, and I appreciate everybody that that, that stuck with me going to it. There's William Old School around. What's up, Old School? Good to see you, bro. You didn't like Larry Holmes or oh, what he did? To, was he, he a, but see, that was all these fault, Old School. Did nobody tell Ali to get in there? You know? I mean, Holmes was just doing what, you know, Ali challenged for the title. So, yeah. And Holmes was telling the referee to stop it, remember? Yeah. So I don't know why you, why was you, you shouldn't have been mad at Holmes, only old school. You should have been mad at Ali for getting in there. You should have known better. But Tyson got Holmes back, remember? Mike did, remember? Mike felt the same way you did, old school. And he said he was going to get Holmes back for that. And he did, remember? He had Holmes in the same situation Holmes had Ali in. Past his prime, no business still in the ring. And Tyson knocked him out. At least Ali had a TKO. Tyson KO'd Holmes. <laughs> you know, out down for the count. Yeah. But yeah, we're going to talk about all that Friday. Good to see you, old school, in the building. Yeah, we're going to talk about all that Friday. Yeah. But yeah, we got on the schedule. Yeah, I'm going to look at it right quick. Because we got a good big boxing week coming. We in now, man. We in a box week of a big week. We got a Pro Box Wednesday, of course. And then Friday. I think Friday is the 29th, right? Come on, 29th. Here we go. We got Oscar Valdez versus Liam Wilson. And uh, we got the women's undisputed fight, Sinisa Estrada versus Ucasa Valley. Ten rounds, two minutes, so I, I don't like that, man. You got to get over there with Jake Paul. Jake giving up 12 rounds, three minutes. And they straw weight, 105. On that last card Jake had a couple weeks ago, he had a four-round women's prospect fight, but they got three minutes. It was four three-minute rounds, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, one of the cruiser's sons, one of one of um, Fernando Vargas' sons on Emil Emiliano Vargas is on the card. He's up to six rounds. He was at four. I think this is this his first six rounder. 
Ray Murray Tyler, yes. Ray Murray Tyler's on there, man. He's fighting. Uh, I thought he would have stepped up a little more. Who is Raymond fighting? I lost it. Raymond's fighting uh, Alasani and John Jenny. Ten rounds, though, so yeah, he's stepping. And yeah, Richard Torres, that's the head rate I was talking about. He's on there. First Donald Hainsworth, eight rounds. Yeah. Told you got some of the top ranks. Here. It's a big card, too. Yeah. Art Barrera, Junior, Junior Welterweights. And then, of course, Saturday is the biggie. The biggie. Tim Zoo and Sebastian Fundora in Vegas. Tim then came out of Australia. Roly and Pitbull. That's Roly's first title shot fight since he, uh, three title fights, man. Because Lara had the WBA middleweight. Wow, that is a big card, man. Three title fights on the card. Hmm. Yes. And that's Saturday. So this week is a big week for boxing. Yeah, we're going to have a good time this week, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> you was cheering Tyson? <laughs> yeah, man. But yeah, we got another cast sports winding on down. Just do boxing. The voice is next up. In this JBT lineup. Mm -hmm. Trying to bring you boxing throughout the day. Day Hardcore starts it off at 8 o'clock a.m. Cast Sports comes on at 10, 2 p.m. Just Do Boxing The Voice comes on at 4 p.m. Day Hardcore Spins The Block comes back at 8 p.m. Then The Rise Podcast comes on at 9 p.m. And you may see, like I said the other day, you may not just see one of the face of boxing coaches on the Rise Podcast. You might see both of them in there. And nowhere else on YouTube, you're going to see the face of boxing coaches on a podcast. And nowhere. Both of them. Okay? And that's at 9 o'clock every night. That's the closer for the JBT. And then on Wednesdays, we have Remo, hashtag Let's Talk Fashion, 10 a.m., weekly show. And then you have Casuals Corner for at McQueen sprinkled in there. He may show up at any time. So you just got to turn your notifications on for Casuals Corner. I kind of like that format, get the Casuals Corner just popping up at any time. Yeah, I kind of like that. And that's the JBT right now. Fire your lineup. We had our first meeting Saturday. It was a good meeting. Hopefully, we'll have some more people in there next week. Because we were filling positions, you know, like treasurer and technological support and recruiting. Or I'm part of the recruiting. And uh, we still got some positions to fill. And we were saying maybe filled by somebody that wasn't even in the meeting Saturday. So, yeah, we please, we need everybody to. Come on by Saturday at one o'clock. You know, even if you don't fill up a district, we can still use your input because we are going places. And, uh, no idea is a bad idea, okay? The only bad idea is the one that you keep to yourself. That's the only bad idea, okay? So, yeah, man, Saturday at one o'clock. I'll be back tomorrow at two, though. Just do boxing is coming on in a few minutes at four. <laughs> right? And tomorrow, don't forget, I'm going to be talking about some of the top switch hitters of all time and some of the top power punches of all time. Both of those are going to be on the same day. It's going to squeeze them in there. Probably 10 good, 10, 10 of the top switch hitters that's ever been in our sport and 10 of the top power guys. Mm -hmm. Like Mike Tyson, Rocky Marciano, uh, uh, man, the guy from the 70s. I'll think of him. 
I don't know why I can't think of him now, but everybody from the 70s said he was a, he had, he had, he punched harder than Foreman. Come on, man. Tim Layton's gone because he would know who it is. Mm, mm, mm. I can't think of him, but he's going to be on there. As soon as I get off the show, it's going to come to me. But I got this thing right in front of me called Google that will tell me before I get off here in the next second. Right on the tip of my tongue. And this guy could punch. Ali, Frazier, Foreman, Holmes, all of them. When they were asked who's the hardest guy they've been punched by, they all said this guy right here. I can't think of his name. It's gonna come to me. But I'm gonna Google it. There it is. Come on. Okay. Yeah, but all of them said this guy, man. All of them. Not Deontay. Ernie Shavers. That's Ernie Shavers. Yeah, that's who I was talking about. He's going to be on there. Yeah, Ali, Foreman, Frazier, Holmes, Norton. When they all were asked who the hardest puncher they ever been punched by, they all said Ernie Shavers. <laughs> yeah. Hit like a mule, man. Ali said, you feel his punches for a couple days after the fight. <laughs> you still feeling them, man. When Ernie Shavers hit you. <laughs> they don't just go away in a day or so. You fought him on Saturday, like Wednesday the next week, you still feeling him earning the shade with punches. Yeah. Let me get on up out of here. I appreciate everybody, man. Um, we have old school of rant. Gregory Pratt, hashtag JBT, AKA GP. At McQueen. D for the win. Just do boxing. Coming up in a couple minutes, like five minutes. The Rise Podcast, The Closer. Thomas Hill, hashtag JBT, the mayor of YouTube. Mike Masick. Lonnie Lee, hashtag JBT, the Boxing Menu Podcast. Justin James, hashtag JBT. Jury Faint, 757. Tim Layton, hashtag JBT. Remo, hashtag Let's Talk Fashion, hashtag JBT. All right. Appreciate everybody for your support, continuing to support my growing channel. I guess I'm growing. Just do boxing coming up next. I'll be back at tomorrow at two, but I'll see y'all. Like I always say, you can't get rid of me that easy. I'll see y'all somewhere today. Just do hardcore. For the Rise Podcast. This is Cast Sports. Everybody have a good day. I'm out. <laughs>